Today I want to share with you my alternative college route for my personal career journey as a content creator, influencer, financial coach, consultant. I think it's important that there's additional content out there that talks about how you can become successful outside of college and you don't have to feel bad or, or feel shame or guilt or any like that in terms of how your parents view you or how your friends view you. Uh, for those people like me that knew college wasn't for you or the military or getting a normal type of career going the corporate route you're a creative you're an artist you're you're just different maybe you're a little weird i want to inspire you motivate you to keep going on the journey don't quit it is going to cost you right very similar to a college degree right it's going to cost you a lot of money a lot of time a lot of effort but if you stick with it right if you think about it in decades rather than a year six months couple hours, couple weeks, really map out your journey in decades, you are going to be so happy you finally get there. I can honestly say, honestly say that my journey has been a 10 year journey so far, 27 years old, recording this video in 2023. I started my journey in 2014, right after I graduated high school. So we're, we're approaching a almost an entire decade, right? Because I'm at the end of 2023, so come, I would say come January, February, we'll officially mark 10-year journey, discovering my purpose, exploring, getting educated, working with mentors, working with coaches, watching content, developing offers, failing, 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 trying to sell this, sell that, failing, 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 to finally the last, the last five years from 20, mid-2018 till now, 2023, really the last five years have been my most successful years in my entire life because I was willing to make the investment. I was willing to take the time. I was willing to invest in myself. And that is extremely hard because if you when you go the college route, it's it's already there. It's set up. The programs are already there. The curriculum's already there. The location's already there. The funding is already there for the most part. You get student loans. You go into massive amount of debt. And hopefully there's a career lined up. So there's there's a path. It's already kind of set. This alternative route to not going to college or not doing the military, this alternative route where you get no degrees, there's no accreditation, there's no recognition. Nobody's gonna give you a diploma when this is all done. No one's gonna, you know, clap and, and cheer your name and you walk across the stage. There's none of that. This is all on you, personally, all on you. You have to figure it out. You actually have to draw out the entire blueprint to your success. There have been plenty of people like myself and others that are on YouTube, all the different social media platforms that are sharing their journey. And if you would just narrow in on a few people, right? You cut out all the noise, you narrow in on a couple people, say, okay, here's who I'm gonna listen to, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna explore, I'm gonna experiment, I'm gonna test it, I'm gonna test the principles that they're talking about, and go and do it, right? So I'm just gonna take it to the whiteboard real quick and just show you what my path was to success in terms of my education, my education investment over the last 10 years. As you can see, these are all different types of, of badges. Some of these are, are paid events. Some of these are free events, right? I can honestly tell you that what you're seeing on the whiteboard there, I have spent in terms of plane tickets, hotels, food, the, the ticket itself for the event, any programs and educational courses that I bought during the event, all of it. I spent well over fifty thousand dollars that's basically a four-year degree bachelor degree basically and if you were to count all the other costs that comes with starting your own business right which would be your quote unquote your career instead of getting a, a job or a career you decide to go into entrepreneurship so that's the alternative route right you factor in that cost oh my goodness i've spent six figures multiple six figures right in terms of running a business failing messing up making mistakes but my my biggest principle path to success specifically regarding acquiring education right studying then going and applying into it my my initial path that starting point right live events in person meeting people rubbing shoulders shaking hands taking people to lunch breakfast think about all that cost that comes with it right so i'm just letting you know it, it is very very costly just like getting a college degree except there is no accreditation for this. There is no recognition. No one's gonna give you a trophy 
for showing up to a live event. I can honestly tell you over the last nine years, now approaching 10 years, I've attended well over 100 events in person. Honestly tell you that. That is a multitude paid and free in-person events. That's networking events, mixers, masterminds, conferences, workshops, seminars, all of the different types of titles that you can think of in regards to a live event, an in-person gathering where there's going to be either a speaker or there's businesses, an expo, whatever it may be. Throw all that in there. I've done all of that in person. And that has been my, my, my number one key to success financially and also education, like to acquire the education fast and efficiently and then go and apply it. A group of other principles that I've been able to acquire over the, over the years in terms of faith, spiritual principles that I have, logical financial principles that I have, and then learning from others. Should you decide to go down this, this path, my, my recommendation is to start local, right? So I'll, I'll put that here. Wherever you are, wherever you live, I would first start local because that really is going to be low cost, right? In terms of commute, traveling, you know, gas, um, you don't have to buy a plane ticket, right? You don't have to stay at a hotel, right? So I would recommend starting local, looking for as many free events as you can. Because you're not going to college, right? You, you chose not to do that, right? Because that's not an option for you or you know that's not gonna work out for you. Okay, cool. You're gonna wanna study a particular market. So what is it if you're not gonna go to college to get a certain career or job, right? And you wanna be an entrepreneur, you wanna start your own business. What is it that you wanna do? What, what skills do you want to have in your tool belt. Where do we where do we go from here? So I would study the market, right, slash industry that you want to be in. You start there and and this is free. Market research is, is free. It doesn't cost you anything. You go on the internet, start watching videos, you start looking up industries, and then within that industry you then look up, you just type in whatever that industry is and type live events, local live events. There is uh, two apps that I've used always to, to find local events is you got Eventbrite and you got Meetup. If you know of others, put it in the, in the comments. But these are the two most popular uh, live event sites that you can go to and, and scroll. If you're gonna start local, like I recommended with low cost and free events, within that you can search general, right? And you can just search business events or financial events or networking events. So you might start general at first in your local area and your goal is to get out of your comfort zone. You want to speak to as many people as you can in the beginning. You want to communicate in terms of follow up, right? So once I meet someone in person, what do I do right after? After that event's over, I got to send them an email. I got to send them a text. So I have to capture their information, get their business card, right? Communicate with them. And I need to develop a system of how many events am I going to go to, right? The, again, start with the low cost free events to get within proximity of people that make more money than you. And since you're not going to college, then what's our source of income for the time being, right? You're going to need to have some kind of a job, right? If you've got no income, no, no income coming from the business yet because you're developing what that business is going to be for you. You want to get a job that's preferably steady, that can cover your expenses, right? You want to live well below your means. You want to stay out of debt. You want to build credit. You want to watch my YouTube channel and you want to get your fundamentals in line in terms of your personal finances, how you're going to operate. And then we develop a, a budget from the job, right? We develop a budget to start going to local events. Now I would recommend personally, you try to find, and they're always happening in your local area. It's always happening, right? Especially if you live in, uh, an area where there's a, a nearby city, right? Maybe you might live outside the city or whatever the case may be, but you find your the closest city that you're you're near, I'm telling you there's always something going on. Always. Right? For for business, networking, financial, always something going on. Then there's, you know, in the, today's time, you know, there's a lot of virtual stuff going on. So that is even that's the least cost. There's so many virtual free events that you can attend. You have so many content creators and gurus that are constantly holding uh, these virtual events. So I recommend we try to find, try to go to at least one to two per week, at least one to two per week. That's, that's what I was doing. Honestly, I had my job. I was working and literally every Friday, every Saturday, every Thursday, I was on Eventbrite, on Meetup, and I was looking for events that I can go to, a networking event, a mixer, a, a seminar, a workshop, even a church event, right? 
anything that involved me getting outside of my comfort zone, speaking and communicating to people to really build up this, this muscle, right? Your vocal cords, one of the strongest tools you have in your tool belt is your voice. The more you hone in on your voice, understand how you sound, all different types of environments, being able to increase your voice when you need to increase it, decrease it when you need to decrease it, have it monotone, have it level, increase incitement, work on your face structure, your how you're presenting to people, how you look. Oh my goodness. All those different things you can develop just by going out there and seeing other people's reaction, how they look at you, how they size you up, right? Everybody does it, right? You walk into a room, someone checks you out, all right? Analyze that. See how, how they view you, right? How you view them. See how you respond when you see someone. Who are you... Who, who do you gravitate to when you show up to that networking event? I know typically for me, when I show up to an event and I'm going solo, I don't know anyone there and I'm just arriving at the networking event. Let's say it's a bar slash kind of like a restaurant where they have like a standing area, kind of a lot of local low cost or free events that are around business networking typically are hosted at bars slash restaurants or maybe coffee shops. And so when you when you arrive, you walk in, I know one of the first things I typically do is I go in line, right? Whether it's I go straight to the bar or I go to the to the line to order the food, right? Get something to put in my hand, right? Something to have in my hand. Gives me time to analyze the area, find out, okay, what who's doing what? All right, we got people sitting over here in the corner, they're talking. Okay, looks like the event is in the back are over there. So maybe you check in, they give you one of these, right? Typically something to wear. They'll give you a badge, a little name tag, something. Okay, cool. Typically I will talk to the people that hosted the event, that put it together. I try to find the host immediately because that allows me to say thank you for putting on this event, putting this together, bringing all these people here, creating an opportunity for me. That's an easy starter type of a conversation, easy, you know, icebreaker. And then typically what happens is when I do that, they'll ask me, well, what do you do? I don't know. Honestly, I just have this job that I'm working right now and I'm trying to start a business. I want to be an entrepreneur. I'm brand new. Don't know what I'm doing, but I'm open to learning. That person likely, especially the host, that putting that event together is likely multiple steps ahead of you, more than likely, because they managed to put this event together, bring people in of all different walks of life. I'm assuming there are a couple of steps ahead, maybe you know financially and business-wise and just all of it, entrepreneurship. Chances are that person's going to introduce you to someone at the event. So now you are slightly relaxed, you got a drink in your hand, water, doesn't have to be alcohol, right? You got a drink in your hand, some kind of a, something, you know, holding, you know, you, you know, hand in the pocket, I don't know, you know, chilling, walk around. And that person introduces you to Tom. And Tom is an entrepreneur. He's been a business owner for 15 years. You might have just met your first mentor. That easy, that simple. And so now you're talking to Tom for about 15 minutes because he's asking you a bunch of questions and you're answering them. And then before you know it, Susie walks over, Dominic comes by, Terry's swinging around, just came out the bathroom. And maybe they overhear you talking now you you, you, know, you turn angles tom's now talking to jerry over there you now are communicating with terry and then susie's standing right there she's getting ready to chime in before you know it freaking hour and a half passes by two hours you spoke to seven people that evening at a 20 25 person event captured business cards exchanged contacts that's your evening two hours of your time you communicated you found people in your local area that live in your local area that you can access. And you go home, you look at your list, and you start emailing every single one of these people. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. You just say, thank you for spending time with me. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. By the way, I'm available next week at this time if you'd like to have coffee. Just two of us. This way, you're able to get a bit of a mastermind with that person. And preferably, out of the seven or so people that I spoke to, I'm going to naturally, there's going to be one person maybe two that you like, that you actually like. You actually enjoyed that conversation. There's gonna be people that you're like, eh, I don't really think she's for me. I don't really think he's for me. I don't know, he's in a totally different industry. Eh, his mindset's a little bit different. That person had four drinks. You know, I'm just not really the alcoholic, you know, type of a drinker. I, I just, maybe that turns you off or maybe they didn't drink enough, right? And then you, you see someone that did have a couple drinks and they're able to hold their own and still have a, a good conversation, make you laugh, say a couple jokes, whatever it may be. There's gonna be like 
one or two people you really resonate with. Those are the people you want to hone in on. And you want to take the initiative, ask them out to breakfast, to lunch, to coffee. Again, we're on a budget, right? Low dollar. So you want to be practical. Hey, let's go to Starbucks. Let's go to Dunkin'. Let's go to a, a simple diner restaurant, somewhere quiet, a Panera Bread, somewhere where there's where there's tables, there's seating, it's, it's, it's quiet, and I can have a in-depth conversation with that person. And who knows, that person can lead you to the next type of an event that you can go to. So basically, if you're doing this one to two times per week, the amount of leads that you're acquiring just organically, naturally, you store that, keep that off to the side. You find that one mentor, that one coach, that one person that you can really build and grow with. Literally within a couple months, you'll, after doing market research, you'll have the idea in terms of the business that you wanna start and, and the direction that you wanna go in. And then, then at that point, we can turn off going to any type of event and start focusing on the specific event are related to your industry. So let's say you wanted to get into the finance industry. Did you go on Eventbrite and Meetup and you would specifically look for financial events, financial conferences, and you start putting a budget together. Again, I would still try to go to as many free ones in the beginning because you're going to be building up a database of potential prospects that will be potential clients for you in the future. So naturally you want to maintain the level of communication with everyone that you introduce yourself to. It'd be as simple as an email, a hello, a text does not require a lot of time, but then you are spending a majority of your time with the people you actually want to learn, grow from, you know, grow with, learn from, get mentor, get coaching, right? That they're willing to pour into you, they're willing to give, and then you you take all that knowledge and information and you you're now able to expand it further, even you know, go longer. You put your budget together, you find that one event that might cost a couple hundred bucks and it's six months out from now. So maybe you don't go to really any events to save up for that one event that might get you to that next thing that you need to do. And that was that was my strategy. I, I had a set amount of events that I would consistently go to until I had the idea. So okay, finance industry, that's gonna be me. Within finance, I chose I want to help people with their finances. So maybe that's coaching, consulting, and I like life insurance. So I want to do that. I want to do life insurance. Get into, boom. Now I had the idea. Then I lowered the amount of events that I was going to because I didn't want to get distracted. I had the people that I wanted to learn from around me and I had a bit of a database, right? Like I've got so many business cards of all the events that I went to and I, I still have them. My database I built up in the beginning. So now I've got the idea, got the business. I now look for a specific event that applies to life insurance, finance, coaching, that kind of thing. Meanwhile, at home, I'm studying, I'm educating, I'm reading the books that apply to what it is that I want to do. Still working my job, right? In terms of my timeline, this is 2014 to 2018. This is all I'm doing. I'll attend to an, I'll attend an event. Maybe I'll get invited to events. If I get invited places, then I go because I know, okay, I got someone I can, you know, hang out with. That's, that's relationship capital that I'm building over a long period of time, right? So 2014, 2018, that's, that's what I did all day long. Now, mind you, I was I was still failing in this whole process. You might not fail. You might succeed much faster, quicker than I did. From 2014 to 2018, it was nothing but failure, right? Yeah, I made a little money here and there, a couple of sales here and there, but I, I didn't really like uh, like get it till end of 2018, going into 2019. That's when I actually started generating. And I can say, I can honestly say, I credit this of what I did going to these events. That gave me the confidence that I needed to start creating content on YouTube and other platforms. And then I no longer needed to network because the business was coming to me. I was attracting potential clients and leads to me, people that actually want to work with me because of who I am, the way I carry myself, the way I speak, the way I operate, the way I communicate. And as you can see, especially if you're watching, that's a client five years later, look, are we, are we not a great fit for each other? Have we not done so much awesome things together? Absolutely. So. That was an in-depth review of the alternative route I took instead of college, the investment, the time, the effort, the strategy that I took. And I recommend that for you, especially if you do not plan on going to college, you do not plan on going to the military. Hey, maybe you're an, maybe you're a grown adult, maybe in your 30s, your 40s, and you're thinking about you know going to college for a particular career, you want to do a switch, or you're looking at entrepreneurship. This applies to you as well. If you're grown, right, in your 30s and 40s, like, I want to switch. I, I want to do something different. I recommend this. Like, the fastest, most efficient way to get within proximity of successful people. And then those successful people, they naturally they just pour onto you. 
I've never met a rich person that didn't want me to win. I've met poor people that don't want me to win. I know family members don't want me to win. I know friends I had in middle school, high school, or colleagues, people I work with, don't actually want to see me win, right? They don't actually want to go with me and, and, and go grow together. They're not interested in it. But I have yet to meet a rich man, a rich woman, successful, that did not want to see me win. That that every conversation I've had with a rich person, they are open-minded, they're willing to listen to you, they're willing to hear you out, they're willing to give constructive criticism and feedback and insight, they're willing to give, potentially help you get to where you're going, whether that be financially, whether that be a connection, a referral, a lead. It's just, I've never had that experience. At the same time, you have to be very, very mindful of these rich folks. They do not have time to waste. If you're ever in a situation where you're talking to someone that clearly makes way more money than you do, 10x, 20x, 100x more money than you do, the last thing you want to do is, is drool, drool and waste time. It's the last thing you want to do. When I say drool, I mean like you're, you don't want to get too starstruck right away. You want to appreciate the value, the time that they're willing to dedicate to you in that moment. Don't waste it by t taking a photo, right? Don't waste it, right? Really try to get information from them, right? And see how you can actually help them. Go into the conversation figuring out how can I actually serve this person? And do your very best not to waste these people's time. They may come off, rich people may come off short, quick to the point. You may interpret that as rude because you're used to having all the time in the world to talk with your family and to talk with your friends and people that like you. When you get into this world, people may not like you right away. They don't know you. How can they like you if they don't know you? So you also need to be quick, efficient, effective, respect these people's time. They're willing to give you a minute, appreciate that minute. They're willing to give you another minute. You need to learn how, you need to you know, communicate and speak in such a way that keeps getting you another 60 seconds, another 60 seconds, another 60 seconds. And that's it for now. I will create more videos like this that just talks about that alternative path to success instead of the, the traditional way that we are accustomed to or we're you know, influenced in going. Not that that's a bad thing. My fiance went to college and law school and graduated and has, has her full time career. So it's not a bad thing to, to go that route. But if you're someone like, like me that you know there was, there was fear, there was doubt, there was worry, there was um, self-limiting beliefs, Maybe you didn't do well in school. Maybe you're not a good test taker. You just you just know it's not for you. You're trying to look for something different. That's where it's at. All right. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, personal finance geek of the 21st century. Have a wonderful day. God bless. We'll be talking soon.